Okay, let's go to our next question. It's from Jenny in Sheffield. Hello, Jenny. Oh, hi there. Thanks for having me on. Hi. Um, I'd like to ask, uh, four years on from the Grenfell Tower disaster, um, what do the panel think should be done to make uh, residents and leaseholders like me who are still living in buildings with unsafe cladding uh, safe? And of course, today is the fourth anniversary. I mean, in a way, it seems much longer than that, but in a way, it seems like only yesterday. Zoe Williams, I'm sure you've written about this a lot in the past. Why do you think that four years on, so many people still are like Jenny, living in properties that they, they feel are unsafe, or well, are unsafe? I have to say, I think this is actually probably the worst, even with everything else that's happened in those four years. It's the worst example of a government that uh, that kind of interferes but doesn't solve. So they've identified the problem with the cladding. They've identified a risk with a huge number of buildings that have this cladding. They, there have been extraordinary stories of residents having to pay for fire guards overnight. You actual people walking around making sure the building doesn't catch on fire. I mean, it's this is, cost- that's quite common. I mean, that's not a, a, I mean, an unusual thing honestly casting people into the most unbelievable financial situations you know in, into negative equity unable to move a worthless flat a bill for removal which they can't possibly face and i think my, my only explanation for it as a government policy is that they just think there aren't enough people affected to make enough trouble for them for it to be their problem now it is their problem you know they're they're the government it is their problem so I don't know whether they are going to kind of step up and and deal with it without just a larger movement against them because they just, it's extraordinary. Uh, I mean, they, they would point out that they provided a £5 billion fund. Now, I mean, £5 billion is a lot of money in anybody's uh, estimation. Um, some people are asking for a lot more than that, but can't put a figure on it. I mean, is this a situation where the government's ju- just got to hold its hands up and say, well, look, we're just going to have to pay whatever it takes? Well, you know, in the, in the fullness of time, right, there, is gonna, there are going to be problems with just with the, the very kind of insurable essence of surveillancing, right? Because if you can have a perfectly legitimate house sale, buy a flat, then find out that it's, it's dangerous and have absolutely no recourse... You know, you've borrowed however much money on the basis of a survey and a number of checks that aren't that, that aren't accountable afterwards. There are there will it, there will over time be insurance and legal claims about this. So it's a lot. It's a it's a kind of it's a large scale problem that they have to think about in terms of how much stability they want to maintain for the system as it is. I think if they want to say, yeah, everything has to remain exactly as it is. Surveying has to, you know, we need to carry on with having faith in this, the kind of mortgage we got and the way we got it, they probably are going to find that the, the, the government is probably going to find themselves liable for more, to put more money okay. in. Yeah. Um, Claire Fox. So this is quite complicated in as much as the government have, through the, the fire safety bill, attempted to, uh, uh, you know, discuss fire safety and to respond to Grenfell. The problem is, is that what they've now done is they've basically made... Um, fire safety not just about cladding right so they basically said it's a whole range of issues and they've if anything gone you know in in a risk averse way that now what's happened is is that leaseholders the the things which zoe well described in terms of the terrible financial penalties on leaseholders is that leaseholders now have to pay for the remediation past remediation of all fire safety Uh, problems, defects, right? And one of the problems with something like Waking Watch, for example, which, I mean, Waking Watches have been put on housing, which is basically not as unsafe as you need a Waking Watch, but it costs a fortune. People are wondering, all these, you know, people are wandering around houses, and then that just gets added on to your service charge, right? And the leaseholders have to pick up this, and they are getting tens of thousands of pounds worth of fees i mean it, this has been a kind of long well not long but a, a discussion that i have been involved in i'm really glad actually just to say as i was having a go at them earlier that the labor party picked this up now and the lib dems and there's actually 
and independence quite a lot of us in the lords going on and on about it because it's an i think it's as big a scandal as the post office scandal because what's going to happen is is a perfectly innocent people who are often by the way leaseholders are often i mean i am one myself of an ex-council flat but me to one side they're often people who are in affordable housing schemes where they bought 25 percent of their of their, you know, the, of their leasehold of a house, the first time they bought, they're often key workers, and suddenly they've got like an eighty thousand pound bill, or they've got to have a massive, a huge increase in the um, the amount they pay for waking watch or any other remedial things. So the number of, of to be more positive and sort of say, first of all, the only people who've been asked to pay are leaseholders. No one else. No, no one else is being held responsible. It's quite difficult because I don't want to just end up saying that every house builder will go uh, bankrupt as well as every leaseholder. So the government have either got to say that they're going to be picking this up like they would with, for example, furlough, because there are sometimes market failures and you have to just intervene in order to stop a catastrophe of lots of people losing their homes, being bankrupt, not being able to sell, being stuck, as well as being unsafe. But the problem about emphasizing the safety too much. I'm, I don't want to. It's, I don't want to be clear because we're talking about Grenfell. But what I'm trying to establish is, if you only talk about that and only talk about cladding, you miss a slightly bigger picture. The only other thing to say is that the five billion pound loan scheme in is not available yet. So they've announced it, but they've made it available. But the bills have started coming in because they passed the fire safety bill. And anyone kept saying when we were trying to have an argument about this, but why don't you make the scheme available then? It's also the case that that five billion pound scheme does not apply for anything other than cladding. And most of the yeah. costs are not cladding removal. And the final thing is this stupid thing about the 18 metre rule. So people, if you, if you basically are in a, a non-high rise flat, you are still being done under the fire safety bill for remedial fire safety work if you're a leaseholder. And there's no fund for you, right? You aren't being helped. And so the whole thing is driving me mad because I'm genuinely concerned that this is one of those issues that the government have got themselves in a tangle. They're not being mean. People say oh, they're trying to defend the developers. I don't think it's that. They've got themselves in a mess and they won't rationally work out how to get out of it by admitting they're in a mess. What is the 18 metre rule? Which is basically if you're in a smaller building, you don't get help. Oh. If you're in but, but you still have to do the remediated. Right, right, right. 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 And, and basically, if you're under 18 metres, they say there won't be as much to do, but that's not true, as yeah. it happens. It's just as much to do. I mean, I'm actually personally mm -hmm. worried, but I'm more that I've heard so many stories from people who, were, you know, they're, they're suicidal and they're frustrated and they're absolutely tearing their hair up because and the, gov and the government minister just thought, he just looks depressed every time we stand up because I don't believe that the government minister in the Lords wants this to be the case. But at some point in the House of Commons, the government minister there tried to imply that leaseholders were just trying to avoid paying a bit of money on their houses and that if they didn't want to be leaseholders, they shouldn't have been leaseholders. Nobody knew when they were leaseholders. We all knew you'd have to pay for the shared roof or whatever. Didn't know that the government were going to change the law, make fire safety such an issue and then say you pay for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Phillips, I imagine your answer could be summed up as what she said. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel pretty similarly, although going back to Zoe's original point, I think that part of the problem with this is that there is a political calculation. And I'm not going to sit here and say, I just think that the government are trying to be mean, although what Claire rightly says about what the minister said about is just people trying to avoid, uh, it was crass considering the concerns uh, of people. But I have real concerns that the vast majority of the people who are affected are people who live in cities where they don't vote conservative it is not a pressing it's not a pressing concern in the bo the letter boxes of um of, of many tory ministers it's, it's a major problem in london um it's it's a major problem in parts of birmingham uh, it's a major problem in, in in big cities that have lots of high rises as well as the the 18 meter rule and so it does just feel like they are because they've been pushed to a vote between claire and myself we, you know ping-ponging this back and forth like four times um and and they just weren't going to give in on it so i think that they've made the political calculation that their leaseholders um that 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 they'll just sort of wear the grief 
um, which is absolutely tragic. And all of the things about the, the scheme that Claire has pointed out is wrong. But I think going back to a more fundamental about Grenfell. So one of the um, the demands of the, the Grenfell United was uh, not just around everybody being able to live in a safe home by a certain period, which is certainly part of it. But it was about the fact that housing regulation and the voices of the tenants and the experiences of the tenants is just so too easy to ignore in the system that we currently have. Uh, and um, when Zoe was alluding to what can be an absolutely crackers and gambling system for the, the vast majority of people who, who buy a house, you're buying it in such good faith in, in lots of cases without knowing. The whole system has a relatively toothless regulator um, who very rarely acts it in my uh, experience of having to deal with ha with all sorts of different housing issues. Certainly new build housing when it is thrown up and all sorts of problems arise from it and it is as if there is no accountability shell company this shell company that nobody can get any answers and as a constituency mp it doesn't feel like since grenfell actually tenants voices have been any better heard or any easier to heard be heard or any mechanism for, for that to happen and that is a fundamental problem as well as leaseholders just being sold down the river can I just say I'm a quick sure. irony, Ian? It was just, a, just to remind us that the Tories might, you know, you might say they're not having to think about these leaseholders. The irony is, is, is that I sat in a debate in which they had just announced their new homeowners, you know, compact. You know, this is the Conservative Party that tries to say, and, and, to, and to be fair, sometimes the Labour Party have ignored leaseholders on the basis that they bought ex-council houses and therefore, you know, they're not as interested in them. Not now on this. That's good. But the Tories are meant to be the one. They're the ones who parrot on about going on. You know, we're the ones who believe in a homeowner democracy. And the same minister who said all this thing about we want new people to buy their homes, we're going to help them buy their homes. And I said, well, God help them if they're leaseholders, because it's going to cost them a fortune. So I don't even I think it in this instance, I just think they need to. This is where I do think politicians need to just go. Can we step back and take a look at this, please? Because we're, we're well, putting it, kicking it into the long grass and it's going to come back and bite them massive.